Hi guys, in the last three lecture we have covered the single phase full wave semi-control rectifier that is the lecture number 13A, 13B and 13C and also we did the Fourier series that is the harmonic analysis of source current in semi-control rectifier. Now in this lecture that is the lecture number 14 we will start single phase full wave controlled breeze rectifier with RE type of load. We have already discussed the single phase full wave control rectifier for RL type of load and RLE type of load but we haven't discussed for RE type of load so in this lecture we will see for RE type of load okay so let us move to the first slide see this is single phase full wave controlled bridge rectifier with load having RE so this is T1 this is T3 this is T4 T2 and this is T4 okay now input voltage this is let us say this is A and this is B so input voltage VAB is equal to Vm sin omega t that is shown in the dotted line see this is the dotted line that is Vm sin omega t and VBA that is equal to minus Vm sin omega t okay here RE type of load is connected so I will have to trigger the thyristor after theta where theta is the angle at which apply voltage see this is the angle theta this is the angle theta so this is RA type of load is connected so I will have to trigger the thyristor after theta where theta is equal to sin inverse E by Vm why I have to trigger after theta I have already explained you in half wave con control rectifier for RE type of load if I will trigger the thyristor T1 T2 before theta then before theta this T1 T2 are in reverse bias so it won't conduct so we have to keep in mind that triggering angle must be greater than equal to theta see here I am triggering this thyristor at omega t is equal to alpha that is greater than theta is it fine now see from 0 to pi what is happening from 0 to pi I am dividing first from 0 to theta from 0 to theta supply voltage is less than E so this thyristor T1 and T2 both are in reverse blocking mode so it won't conduct reverse blocking mode means it won't conduct so output voltage I will get that is equal to E and I naught will be 0 now see from theta to alpha from theta to alpha supply voltage is greater than E means this supply voltage this is Vs means anode potential is greater than E but I am not triggering this T1 and T2 T1 and T2 are triggered at alpha so this will be in forward blocking mode T1 and T2 will be in forward blocking mode and I am not triggering the thyristor that is gate current will be 0. So in this case also output voltage will equal to E and I0 is equal to 0. Okay. Now see I am triggering the thyristor T1 and T2 at omega t is equal to alpha. So from alpha to pi minus theta this is pi minus theta. Okay. So from alpha to pi minus theta supply voltage is greater than E also gate current I am giving IG is not equal to 0 means I am triggering thyristor T1 and T2 in this case output voltage will follow the supply voltage that is equal to Vm sin omega t and we are getting output voltage is equal to Vm sin omega t like this from alpha to pi minus theta and current I will get that is equal to V0 minus E upon R that is equal to Vm sin omega t minus e upon r is it fine so i am getting i naught load current from alpha to pi minus theta this is alpha and this is pi minus theta now what will happen after pi minus theta after pi minus theta again supply voltage is less than e that means this again thyristor t1 and t2 will go into the reverse blocking mode and it won't conduct so current will be zero after pi minus theta and output voltage will be equal to e here I am not assuming that I0 is constant because this is RE type of load in RE type of load I0 can be discontinuous right because inductor is not present at the, in the load. So here I0 I am getting discontinuous and after pi output voltage will be equal to E and it will continue to E till pi plus alpha because uh, at omega t is equal to pi plus alpha I am triggering this T3 and T4. So at omega t is equal to pi plus alpha I am triggering t3 and t4 so the moment when you trigger the t3 and t4 then you will get output voltage is equal to vba that is equal to minus vm sin omega t so output voltage will follow the negative of input voltage like this okay 
and in this way the cycle repeats so i can say that from 0 to alpha output voltage is e from alpha to pi minus theta output voltage will follow the input voltage and from pi minus theta to pi plus alpha again output voltage is e and load current i will get from alpha to pi minus theta only now if i'll have to find the circuit turn of time so to fi for finding the circuit turn of time we have to see for what angle the thyristor is in reverse bias so here you can see that thyristor let us say the thyris i am talking about thyristor t1 okay so thyristor t1 is conducting from alpha to pi minus theta okay and after pi minus theta this t1 will go into the reverse bias so from pi minus theta to 2 pi plus theta let us say this is theta not theta 1 so from pi minus theta to 2 pi plus theta this thyristor t1 will be in reverse bias means reverse blocking mode so in that case the angle for which the thyristor is in reverse blocking mode means reverse bias will be omega tc is equal to 2 pi plus theta minus pi minus theta so it will come out to be pi plus 2 theta so circuit turn of time will be pi plus 2 theta upon omega take this point okay now take a note and find the average output voltage so what will be the v naught average c in one cycle that is from 0 to pi time period is pi means 1 upon pi this is pi from 0 to alpha output voltage is e d omega t from alpha to pi minus theta output voltage is vm sin omega t and from pi minus theta to pi output voltage is again e d t so if you will find the average output voltage you will get 1 upon pi into vm cos alpha plus cos theta plus e into pi plus theta okay where theta is equal to sin inverse e by Vm. Theta is the angle at which the supply voltage is equal to E. In this way you can calculate the V0 average. So I0 average will come out to be I0 average I can easily found that is V0 average minus E upon R. Okay. This is the third point. So you have to find the first circuit turn of time. This is the first point. Second V0 average and third is i not average okay in this way i have completed the single phase full wave rectifier that is controlled as well as semi-controlled controlled is lecture number 12 semi-controlled is lecture number 13 i divided in three categories that is 13 a 13 b and 13 c okay and again lecture number 14 is controlled with re type of load this is the lecture number 14 so in this way i have completed single phase full wave rectifier in the next lecture that is lecture number 15 we will solve the previous year gate problem we will solve all the gate problem that has been asked from 1991 to 2017 related to single phase full wave rectifier okay if you guys understood the concept then please like this video for doubt solving you can join our facebook group thanks for watching this video